About a year ago, my daughter redid her kitchen and we put in new cabinets. Decided that a kitchen island would make a lot of sense. About a three foot by five foot butcher block top, a couple of stool seating, some shelves, some drawers. So here I am starting that project. I took a piece of hard maple to create the legs, process it by jointing one face, planing the opposite face to get two faces square. Off camera, I glued those together, let them set up, and I had my leg blanks. This is my first project using my sliding table saw. It's a new to me saw. And one of the things that I wanted to try was to get that third face square by using this technique, which is to push the thing up against the fence that's only about a blade width away and slide it through doing the rip on the table. Worked out really well. Then I can take my mag clamps that I built, a couple of mag switches and a Rockwell hold down clamp, measure those to the final width, clamp the piece against the mag clamps, and do the final cut to get my leg blanks in their final dimension. Moving on to the drawer boxes, here I am cutting out some sides of the drawers using both blades of the sliding table saw, the scoring blade here and the cutting blade. I'm also using the hold down clamp and the fence so the board is so held in so tightly that I can do things like this where I'm holding just the end of it, just the very tip of it, and the long part is in the cutoff doing this quite safely. I felt very comfortable. I took the pieces over to my lead dovetail jig to start cutting out the blind dovetails. Blind dovetails I think are the easiest because it's one setup for the uh, the router bit. You don't have, don't have to change it at all. Here's the pins. And here I'm cutting the tails. Or maybe these are the pins and the other one's the tails. I don't know which is which. There you go, that's the joint. All done. This is of course just the dry fit assembly here. I did put grooves in the bottom of this and put drawer bottoms in before I did the final glue up. So the butcher block top for this was going to be something that we were going to go just by and cut to size. But I found a bowling alley on Craigslist for sale. Yes, a bowling alley. And I thought, well, that's just kind of a shortcut. It was like a third of the price of the butcher block. I said, yeah, let's try it. So here is a five foot section of Canandaigua lanes. And I'm going to show you how I processed this. First thing I had to do was to take all the varnish off and there was a heavy layer of varnish on this thing. What I found was southern yellow pine with some hard maple on the edges. Um, and I also found it was not glued together very well. In fact, it's nailed together. And I started gluing these gaps thinking I was just space filling. But it turns out, you know, the, the whole thing was just kind of falling apart. 
did a lot of sanding, got it down to a decent finish, and found that uh, each of these gaps still had varnish in it. I spent a lot of time trying to make this a food grade kitchen countertop. This is what I ended up with. It's got gaps, it's got issues. But the bigger issue was that it's not structurally sound. Because it's not really glued together, it's just nailed. It was very flexible. The board that you see screwed at the bottom of the frame here, that was holding the whole thing together. So I got some 3 8 inch aluminum, built some recesses, drilled a whole lot of holes in the aluminum, and I actually created a structure for this on the underside. Here I've applied the edges, um, the sides. I, I have my own uh, hard maple that I created as a trim to go around the outside of this. And to do the ends, I needed to cut a groove to do a breadboard end. But this thing is full of nails. And I spent a lot of time digging out each of these nails so that I wouldn't be ruining my router bit. This is actually cutting the groove for the breadboard end. Really all I did is just make it snow inside. There was so much dust getting thrown up. This is not the way to do this, by the way. This is just a bad, bad method. There are better ways to do this. This is a high risk method because there's so much stick out on that uh, slot cutting bit. All in all, I would say using a bowling alley is not going to save you money. It's not going to save you time. If you like the historical aspect of it, maybe it's worth it. But it was not worth it in my case. I'm gluing just the center 8 inches of the spline into the, into the ends and only gluing the, the middle section here, just in case there actually is movement in the end. Expansion and contraction. Besides the aluminum structure that I put underneath, the ends here added a tremendous amount of strength to the whole uh, kitchen block top here. I'm not sure I like having just a raw cutoff end here. I'm not sure how to do the breadboard ends properly so that you don't see that. Moving on to the base structure. I'd used just poplar from Home Depot, cut things to length. Everything is going to be mortise and tenon together, uh, so the cuts here were not critical. The shoulder cuts on cutting the tenons are what was the critical dimension. So the chop saw is fine to use here. Making the tenons on a sliding table saw is very different. I can't use a tenoning jig like on my old table saw. So here I am making the shoulder cuts and that's pretty straightforward uh, using the sliding table. I'm controlling the table with both my hands as well as my hips. Once the shoulder cuts are made, I'm going to lay this flat and then plow out the, the bulk of this by pushing the, the board against the side of the blade so that the blade cuts it as it passes across. 
it plows out a lot of wood in a short period of time. This makes a lot of normal woodworkers cringe, but I'm controlling the table with my hips, I'm controlling the board with my hands, I have a fence right behind it, I can't do it, can't get a kickback. Um, I think it's pretty safe. I felt very comfortable doing it. There's the final tenon. That's it, it's a pretty easy way to build a tenon. And it's pretty clean, pretty straightforward. I don't actually feel the, the ridges or anything. That's pretty good. It's not the way you're supposed to do it. If you do it that way, you'll hurt yourself according to everything on the internet. I think it's fine. Moving on to the mortises. Here I'm mortising the legs and of course I'm cheating. I have a dedicated mortising tool and I have the right bit size. A little cleanup of the mortises and the tenons with a chisel just to make the edges perfect and uh, it's just a push together assembly. I really did not have to use a mallet much at all. Just do this another 20 or so times and the base is done. This is where a sliding table saw really shines. Uh, this is a perfect 90 degree cut on half inch plywood, I think it was. Uh, this is the panel that goes between the seating area and the shelving. It's a five foot long rip. It's just a mortise and tenon joinery with a groove cut in the uh, in the the rails and styles. There we go. <sighs> Once I put in some pine sideboards for the drawer mounts finish the drawer boxes, put in the slides. This is what you end up with for the base. I glued on some drawer faces and moved on to the shelves. This is three quarter inch plywood. Same thing, sliding table saw makes this very easy. Cut around the legs for the, the bottom shelf. And here I'm cutting grooves into the legs for the middle shelf. The middle shelf is actually going to be supported by these, uh, I guess you're calling them mortises. Once the assembly is done in the base, my daughter showed up and we sanded. Lots and lots of sanding. Um, got the whole thing nice and smooth. And then we started painting. Uh, this paint was pretty darn incredible. She brought it from, uh, I think it was Home Depot. It dried in about five minutes. I had asked my daughter if she wanted, you know, beveled faces on the on the legs, any sort of decorations, any sort of adjustments to this. And she said no, she liked it square. So we left it as is. 
In the end, would I ever use bowling alley surfaces for anything? And I think the answer is definitely no. It ended up being probably more expensive to try to use it than it would have been to just go buy butcher block or even just do it myself. So I loaded it up in the truck and took it for delivery. And there it is, fully completed. Probably about half the price of buying it. My daughter thoroughly enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll post some more of these. Just getting back to it. Haven't posted in a couple of years. Maybe it'll be another couple of years.